Looks like she's out of fuel in the 49 car. Out of gas. Man, man. Rookie team. Costly mistake. That's going to cost a few laps for sure. But now that all, all the rest of these cars should see that and start hitting pit road soon. Is she going to make it though? Do you chance it and stay out or will she make pit lane? Here they come. Robbie Gordon, Kyle Petty, and Ricky Craven are leaving pit road. As Jerry Nadeau, Jeff Gordon, Ryan Newman, and a host of others come in. Harvick is in, Ward Burton, Michael Waltrip, Ricky Rudd, Stacy Compton, Kenny Wallace. And we go to Bill Weber. And Jerry Nadeau is on pit road, worked with the 24, his teammate Jeff Gordon to pit together to make sure each would have a partner. Nadeau has been thrilled with the performance of his car. Jeff Gordon is on pit road, just a little tick tight, but they don't plan a chassis adjustment. Both these cars taking four tires and fuel. They want to have similar stops, get out together, and try and take Hendrick Motorsports to the front of the field. They're party. Ryan Newman is tight when he's behind other cars, Bill, but he's free when he's out front. An excellent four tire stop for these guys, and they'll beat all those guys off pit road. Dave Marcus, does he run out of fuel? Looks like he has to me. And he might bring out a caution. Shauna Robinson has made it back to pit road. But we'll keep an eye on Dave Marcus. Here's Dale Earnhardt Jr. in. Marty? And Alan, they will not put on the front nose piece that they made because we're under green flag conditions. He said it has a very, very bad push. They are going to change four tires. They are going to make a wedge adjustment as well. They really wanted to put that piece of the nose on because that will make the car better aerodynamically. They're going to put on as much tape as they can to patchwork together what is already on the right front of the race car, hoping that it holds on. And when they do get a caution, they're going to put on this front nose piece. They go back to the right side to make sure that tape is down pat and a little bit of problem on the left rear tire and a long stop for the butt team. Some of the leaders who've not yet stopped are coming in now. Dave? Shawna Robinson has now refired the car. They were putting fuel in to prime the carburetor. She tries to get it out. They will push it out. Meanwhile, Bobby Labonte is in. His car was just a little bit loose. They're going to take a pound of air pressure out of the left rear tire. They will change four and try to send it back out of here. The two right side tires are on. Two left side tires being put on now, and Labonte is gone. Matt. Dave, the 40 car of Sterling Marlin is in, as is the 88 of Dale Jarrett. They made a chassis adjustment on the 40. He's been fighting a tight condition all day, meaning when he goes to turn the car, the car continues to want to go straight, and the 88 service is done as well. Caution is out for Dave Marcus's stalled car in turn four. There are a couple of cars who have not made pit stops yet, but most everybody who was on the lead lap will be okay. And those two cars that have not pitted, the 97 and 99, they're not in great shape because you know they're almost out of fuel. When the pace car picks them up, if they drive up on the bank, the fuel is going to run away from the pickup and they might run out of gas on the caution flag. Jeff Burton is the leader. He and Kurt Busch have not yet made those pit stops. And now, the interesting part is picking up the right leader with the pace car and getting the field gathered up so where everybody's in the right lap. It's always one of those things when you put a caution out in the middle of green flag stops. Well, there you see the pace car. Kenny Schrader and all those guys that had made their pit stops, they slowed down because Schrader thought he was the leader. But the pace, the leader is in turn two, and Schrader was in turn three, waiting for the pace car to catch him. So they... They've got to go all the way around and catch up to the pace car. Schrader and the others do, so it's going to be a minute before they get the chance to come back around. But having just stopped under green, we should only see a couple of guys on pit road here, right? Right, right. They, they'll all stay out and get their position back. Unless Dale Jr. decides to go in and put that nose piece on his car. Yep. Well, now's the time to do it. They've got plenty of time to do it, so I, I think you're right, BP. We'll see that happen. And you saw the four car down on the apron of the racetrack. Looked like he was out of fuel. I saw him whipping the car back and forth. You see the 97 up on the 31 degree banking. The fuel gets away from the pickup. But it looks like these guys are going to be okay. Jeff Burton, Kurt Busch, Mike Skinner. And Skinner is out of fuel. See him weaving the car back and forth, trying to slosh some gasoline over to the pickup. 
They come to pit road. Let's see how many of the others who just stopped under the green come in here as well. Ken Schrader's coming back in. Matt? Alan Kurt Busch is in for service. Andy Thurman going to work on the front. His car is tight. You can see the crew member making a chassis adjustment. They also made an air pressure adjustment in the right rear tire. A Ford tire change for Bush to Marty. Jeff Burton is here. His car is extremely tight, but it has been pretty fast today. Taking a long time on the right rear because they're putting a rubber in the right rear, which should loosen him up. Bill Ever. Well, Ken Schrader was here. Fuel only. Jeff Gordon is back on pit road. Fuel only. The 43 on pit road. Fuel only. A lot of guys looking at different options here. Some guys pitting for fuel. Some guys stand out. The big deal was if this thing goes green the rest of the way, the guys that had pitted early, like Schrader and company, were concerned that they wouldn't be able to get there on fuel. Marty. And Dale Earnhardt Jr. putting on the fender that we talked about. This is a very tedious process. They're using pop rivet guns and screw guns as well. They're putting it on and trying to secure it as best they can so it will stay on for the rest of the race. They have done very well with patchwork. They think they'll be even better with this more permanent fix. And this is unbelievable. They've got a couple of minutes because it takes that long for a pace lap around this giant two and a half mile track. We're under caution in the Daytona 500. The second caution of the Daytona 500 giving this massive crowd a chance to stretch their legs and chat amongst each other during a rare moment of quiet. Listen to this. Get out of the way, get out of the way, drop it, go. Dale Earnhardt Jr. telling his crew, hey, pace car's coming. We've got to get back on the track. He has stayed on the lead lap and come back to pit road for more repairs. We'll come back in a minute. NASCAR on NBC with a 44th Daytona 500 about set to go back under the green flag. 35 cars on the lead lap. Bobby Labonte is now the leader. Did not come back to pit road under the yellow. Mark Martin is second. Sterling Marlin, Dale Jarrett, and Elliot Sadler round out the top five. First car to the inside of the leader is Ricky Craven. He got trapped a lap down by that caution flag. On board with the Motocraft Ford of Elliot Sadler as he closes in on the back bumper of Dale Jarrett trying to push Jarrett to the front. Bid for the lead. Here comes Mark Martin. And Sterling Marlin makes it three wide. Marlin to the lead. And Bobby Labonte is where he does not want to be in the middle. The leader last time will be lucky to be tenth this time by. And there's nothing you can really do about it when you're in that situation. Those lines move on you. You may be in line saying, okay, I'm great, I'm great. All of a sudden, these guys start splitting you behind you, and they put you in the middle. Well, actually, he was ninth that time by. You were close. Marlon leads. Jarrett is up to second. Elliott Sadler third. Dodge, Ford, and Ford. Then Mark Martin and Matt Kenseth, Rusty Wallace and Ryan Newman, Ricky Rudd, all driving Fords. So apparently the incredible shrinking spoiler has done its job. It's made the Fords competitive. Dave Marcus's car brought out that last caution, stopping on the racetrack. They have taken it behind the wall. Stacy Compton also has had A.J. Foyt's car pushed behind the wall. And Stacy Compton in the 14 car broke the gear when he made his pit stop. When he released the clutch to go back on the racetrack, the rear gear broke. That happened three times in last year's Daytona 500. It might be something to think about when these guys start making those important pit stops to try to get track position later on. And Dave Marcus's car has just been reported out of the race. We will look to follow up and hear from him as his NASCAR Winston Cup driving career is now over. A lot of lead changes today. I think more than we expected so far. 14. Michael Walter, last year's winner of the Daytona 500, trying to, trying to work his way back as he pulls alongside Jeremy Mayfield. 
That's 11th and 12th they're racing for. Elliott Sadler getting shuffled back a little bit. Matt Kenseth by him to third. Rusty Wallace in that outside lane. The two car. Now, if you saw the 17 car there, he almost got stuck in the middle. But he used that blocking mirror we were talking about, BP, and he put a block. Is that Ricky? Ru yeah, Ricky, Ricky right. right behind him. Okay. But he was right there, and he saw Ricky was having a run, and he turned the car down left and blocked Ricky. Mark Martin looking ahead at Kevin Harvick. Remember, Harvick had the right front fender repaired after some pit road damage. See, Michael Waltrip, that's Mike Walsh in the 33 car. As he, Alan Toe, he's changed the battery in that car, and he's about five laps down. Let's go to Marty Snyder. Well, Alan, it's been a strange day here at Daytona, but this one may take the cake. Jeff Burton said he felt something rolling around on the floorboard of his race car. This was it. Part of the time it was under the gas pedal. Some of the time it was under the brake. Some of the time it was under his foot. They had to take the window net down, make two stops to find out what it was. It was a roll of duct tape. Now, as far as Dale Earnhardt Jr. goes, they have another nose on the car, about 50 pop, rivet, pop rivets and about 20 screws and a lot of bloody fingers down here. But Tony Urey Jr. told me they feel like they have a better chance to win in this race now. Junior asked, do I have two noses on the car? Tony Junior said, yeah, you have two noses. Maybe we'll win by one of them. To Bill Weber. Well, Marty, it's been an amazing day for Ricky Rudd and his crew. During the first round of caution flag pit stops, Rudd was leaving pit road and hit a tire with the left front portion of that front air dam. It did significant damage, bashed it in. They had to hammer it back out, then attach some sheet metal underneath and put tape over the front of it. Rudd has worked his way back up to the front. I just talked to Mike McSwain, his crew chief. They said the car is good. They've got a chance. Let's go further down pit road today. Bill, when a driver wants to talk to his crew, there's a little button on his steering wheel he pushes. They call that keying the mic. There's a microphone inside his helmet. He then talks to his crew. Well, Rusty's been doing that, but the microphone has been hung open. It stays open, and so Rusty suddenly can't even talk to the crew anymore. They can't communicate with him. Now, they don't think it's a problem between his primary radio and his backup radio. They think the wiring between the switch on the steering wheel and his radio may be faulty. They hope they can do something about it if they get a long caution later on. Boy, that's going to be tough to fix. And as Dave said, we, we have two radios in the cars. In case something happens during the yellow, we can switch the radio. But if it's in that wiring harness on the steering wheel BP, that can't be fixed. Nothing they can do. Now, Rusty can talk to the crew if it's if the mic is keyed. He can talk to the crew, but unfortunately, they can't talk to him and tell him when to pit, ask him what the car's doing. And as Bill Weber said earlier, this uh, last set of pit stops might set us up for only one more visit to pit road the rest of the race, and that could be such a problem for Wallace's chances to win. Yeah, because he was one of the first cars in, so his fuel miles probably have been... Oh, Earnhardt Jr. flying through the grass! Right rear tire yes. down. Looks like the right rear is flat. Yep. Didn't hit anything, but he came no tearing no off no the racetrack. He's got no brakes, he said. Wow. No wonder he was flying through the grass. Boy, it just happened, but some bitch blow the tire or something, broke a down something. Caution is no out. Break, so. Caution is out for debris from Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s car between turn four and the entrance of Pitt Road. The cars are going to come past it right now. See it there on the left. Uh, excuse me, the right. Driver's left. The other right. I knew what I was thinking from the driver's perspective. <laughs> 